Hi friends, uh, welcome to another uh, presentation, um, but this time, you know, we're going to take a very different topic, right? Um, I want to talk about the difference between 5G rollouts in India, right? Uh, if you look at 5G, that's currently, uh, you can see the signal on my phone, right? I'm using two SIMs. I'm going to show you, demonstrate the difference between uh, what is a 5G rollout using non-standalone architecture and then 5G using standalone architecture. Now, the place where I stay in Bangalore currently, uh, where I'm supporting, staying right now, uh, supports 5G standalone architecture. So uh, I have a number uh, and that supports a 5G standalone. And then I have another uh, Airtel number which supports a 4G uh, number and it's a 4G plus. And we're gonna talk about uh, fundamentally two things firstly today, right? One is uh, in non-standalone architecture, which Airtel is now rolling out. Unfortunately, I still I still don't get it on my phone right now, right? Uh, you know, you can see that in, in non-standalone architecture, what happens is typically, uh, you know, this user is uh, the existing 4G networks, right? It does carrier aggregation. So a lot of people in India, right, for the last seven, eight years are using handsets, which uses radio signals, airwaves from a previous generation, right? So what Airtel thought was the implementation of uh, 5G in a non-standalone architecture would be easier to implement because then they can roll it out in villages, everywhere, and the adoption rate would be faster. Uh, then uh, typically we've seen is eventually, right, you will have to move to a standalone architecture. Now from a layman's perspective, what is the difference between uh, you know, standalone as well as uh, non-standalone architecture. Let me quickly tell you in terms of the difference between uh, the standalone and non-standalone architecture. See, in uh, in non-standalone architecture, what happens is, you know, uh, anybody can use it, right? Uh, it gives you the speed, uh, good speeds of about 500, 600 Mbps, sorry, uh, Mbps. I've seen it in Delhi during their Airtel little show rollout. Whereas in standalone architecture, uh, it's uh, typically if you see what Reliance is saying is that it's going to be true 5G. Now, what is a true 5G? What it does is that the devices that is being used currently for 5G rollouts are absolutely independent and they only support, you know, uh, the latest version of the phones. So if you have an old version of the phone, uh, you know, it will not work. So all the new iPhone 13 Pro Maxes, the S22 3 Ultras of the New World Order, all those models are going to support, right, the 5G in true sense, right? Uh, so the only problem with the 5G standalone is that maybe the old versions of the phone will not work, which has 4G, right? So there are two ways to implement 5G. Uh, again, if I, and I'll show you the speed of my Reliance 5G standalone, uh, you know, still in trial and testing basis. Uh, how much speed I am getting, right? See, it supports machine-to-machine -machine communication. Uh, the low latency connectivity uh, is extremely great in a true 5G standalone architecture. So when we say uh, low latency connectivity, what does we mean? What it means is the ability to send packets of data and receive data, right, information, in a typically in a 4G, as you can see on my screen, right, is typically 10 to 100 milliseconds in a 4G environment. So when you're refreshing the screen in YouTube or you're browsing, you know, it might take just a bit of delay and then the screen comes in. But in 5G, you know, it's astonishing the way mankind has evolved, right? The second is only one millisecond, which means you actually can play 8K videos without any point of stoppage. It's just flawless. And uh, also there's an option of network slicing. So what do we mean by network slicing? It means greater flexibility towards spectrum holding. So today Reliance, you know, I'm in Bangalore, tomorrow I'm in the train, I am inside a tunnel, I'm in the metro, I'm somewhere outside. There is no breakage of connectivity. Whoever owns that network can easily able to decongest, right? And ensure that the smooth connectivity, absolutely like butter, which you have it with bread, right? That kind of a feeling is a morning breakfast, first thing in the morning, right? Now let's go and also see what did extra that Reliance do? Well, they tied up. It's a complete made in India initiative. What it did is it tied up with Microsoft Azure so that you know that uh, storage and the speed and every technology is quickly utilized for this environment as well as Meta and Qualcomm for technology solutions.
now that i've talked about the difference between 5g uh types right i'm going to show you a speed test on how my 5g speed looks right right so uh, i'm going to go to hit speed test right and uh, you can see uh you know you can see if i go up you can see it's reliance again if i put it close you know you can see 5g setup is there i'm going to zoom in and uh, you can see uh, very clearly the 5G signal right there on my, uh, you can say, on my phone. Now I'm going to zoom out now, right? And I'm going to play this test and let's see how much data I get, the speed. Connecting. See the speed. I'm going to grow close up. Wow. And still going on. So you can see 812 megabytes per second that is the speed you get on a standalone and trust me guys i stay a little remote uh, in bangalore and it's great and I almost get approximately around 100 right 95.8 is the upload speed now this is the speed that you get in a true 5g setup airtel will also give you similar speeds but eventually you know we will all have to move to a 5g standalone maybe five to six years down the line it's very beneficial for Airtel uh, and others to start with a non-standalone architecture for mass compensation and utilization. But the true 5G in sense is what Reliance has opened. Big vision. I wish very best to both of these uh, operators so that we customers get the best. So let me show you what would be the speed like if I switch off my 5G. So I'll go to connection. I'll go to SIM card manager. I'll go to mobile data. You see, I've got two SIMs, right? I'm going to switch off uh, SIM 2 and I'll only take SIM 1. You can see it's turning off. And uh, mobile data, one will be activated very shortly. Now you can see, you know, my 5G is completely turned off, right? I only have 4G+. Plus. What is 4G+. Plus? 4G Plus is a superior coverage beyond 4G. It aggregates network towers, wear waves into one single packet so that you get greater flexibility in speed. Now let's do a speed test using my speed test app, right? And see what is the speed that we get on uh, 4G. So I'm going to hit the button. And this was the 5G that we spoke about, right? In terms of the speed. Now let's talk about the speed in 4G. Hit go. Let's see. Just see the difference, guys. Can we imagine it? 800 plus Mbps. And here, you know, I'll get maximum around 50 Mbps at this point of time. Obviously, it goes higher. Typically, it's 47.8 when I do 4G+. plus. So you can imagine 47.8 is the download compared to 800 Mbps. Imagine what will happen to the video calls. Imagine what will happen to the gamers. Imagine what will happen to the, all the medical equipment which are connected in the hospital for the very critical high OT patients, right? It's going to change the way we live. Well, if you really like this short video, uh, do don't forget to share and subscribe to this channel and also post your like. Looking forward to your cooperation and do give me a thumbs up and looking forward to meet you again in this channel. Thank you for watching.